Hello, my name is Mazen Asfar, and welcome to the second part of our upper limb uh, anatomy series. So today we're going to concentrate on the muscles of the forearm, and what I'm going to do is separate them into the flexor and extensor compartments. Let's start with the flexor compartment. Again, we're going to use the structure that I proposed in the last lecture. So the first muscle is the pronator teres. Now its proximal attachment is the medial epicondyle, and its distal attachment is the lateral surface of the radius. It's innervated by the median nerve, and its function or action is, as its name suggests, to pronate the hand and the forearm. Flexor carpi radialis. Its proximal attachment is again the medial epicondyle, and its distal attachment is into the second and third metacarpal bones. Like most of the muscles in the flexor compartment, it's innervated by the median nerve, and its function or action is to flex the forearm, as well as abduct and flex the hand. Palmaris longus is a muscle that, uh, that originates in the medial epicondyle and it inserts into the flexor retinaculum, which is a thickened portion of fascia. It also inserts into the palmar aponeurosis, which again is a thickened por portion of the palmaris uh, fascia. Again, it's innervated by the median nerve and its function is to flex the hand and the forearm. Flexor carpi ulnaris originates in the medial aspect of the humerus, as well as a medial uh, electron of the ulna, which is basically the bony prominence of the elbow. And it inserts into the um, pisiform bone, hook of hame, as well as the fifth metacarpal bone. This muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve, and its function is to flex and adduct the hand, as well as flexing the forearm. Now we're going to talk about the flexor digitorum muscles, of which there are the superficialis and profundus, profundus meaning deep. And uh, we're also going to look at how the tendons insert into the phalanx of the hand. Flexor digitorum superficialis originates in the medial epicondyle, as well as the coronoid process of the ulna. This distal attachment is the middle phalanges of the digits. As you can see, the superficialis muscle inserts into the middle aspect of the phalanx. But also note that the tendons split into two at this stage. We're going to talk a bit more detail about that in a minute. This muscle is innervated by the median nerve and its function is to flex the proximal interphalangeal joints. Now the flexor digitorum profundus proximal attachment is the anterior medial surface of the ulna, as well as the interosseous membrane, which is a membrane that is um, between the ulna and radial bone. This muscle inserts into the basis of the dis distal uh, phalanges of the hand, which is demonstrated here in this diagram. This muscle is innervated by both the ulnar and medial nerves, and its function is to flex the distal interphalangeal joints and assist in flexing the metacarpal phalangeal joints as well. So this diagram demonstrates how the flexor digitorum profundus goes through the um, flexor digitorum superficialis tendons, which is demonstrated by the arrow. And this clearly demonstrates the function of these muscles. So we're going to look at the muscles of the extensor compartment of the forearm. And obviously I'm not going to go through all the muscles again, but um, I'd like you to concentrate on the brachial radialis, 
extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, extensor digitorum, abductor pulsus longus, extensor pulsus brevis, flexor and extensor carpi ulnaris, and the extensor digiti minimi. Now we mentioned that the muscles of the flexor compartment are supp supplied by the median nerve, or most of them are supplied by the median nerve. And it's the same here. Most of the muscles in the extensor compartment are supplied by the radial nerve. And when you're looking through these muscles, remember the structure that we proposed of identifying the proximal and distal attachment, the innervation, and the function or action of the muscles. Thank you for joining us uh, on this podcast. See you soon for the anatomy of the lower limb, part one.